www.richarange.blogspot.com I am in the basement. Why am I in the basement and not in the office? Well, there's a reason for that. I told you my husband needed to have his computer uh, set up because he has a lot of freelance. And that's what happened last week. He was doing freelance pretty much every evening. So I could not move his stuff. And he's doing freelance this weekend as well. So I can't move his computer and his stuff to build my bookcase. So... Knowing me, I have to keep active, I have to, I have to keep busy, so I'm doing small projects around the house just to keep me going. Sometimes you don't need to tackle something ginormous that's going to take two or three weeks for you to tackle and complete. Sometimes you just need a quick project that's going to take you maybe an hour, maybe two, three hours or half a day or maybe just one day just to keep you going and keep you motivated to continue to organize your house. And I said that's what I was going to do while I am out of work, was just to tackle one project after the other and finally get this house completely organized. So for those of you who've never seen the basement, I'm going to give you a quick tour. We start with the stairs. That's my entryway with the back entrance. You know about it, right? This I need to repaint, obviously, because of the scuff mark. So when you come down the basement, the first thing you see is the coat rack that's right here um, with some shoes. And then you have this space right here where I have my old piece of furniture with two antique chairs that are on either side. You probably can't see the other one over there with a rug underneath it. Then you have right here, that's one of the doors that goes to the boiler room. If you remember my video about reorganizing that, it's still organized. I have a bookshelf right here that is leaning because it needs to be replaced, but that's not the project I'm doing today. On this side right here, you have the desk that I have repainted and redesigned and put some, um, what you call it, Mod Podge uh, paper on top and um, if you remember, I had a video about doing the wall here too. So then you pan this way, you have the laundry room over there. You have the uh, one um, bookcase countertop that I built. That's also a video that's available on my channel. And then when you go this way, you have kind of like the open area with the old busted sofa and then the TV and this um, thing right here, entertainment center, which I built but lost the footage for. So I'm not gonna be able to show you that. But anyway, so here's the old sofa that needs to be reupholstered one day. It's a, um, I can't remember the brand, but my mother-in-law gave it to us. She had it custom made years, years ago. I'm talking 25 years. It's really frayed, as you can see you know, some of the cords here, but it's super comfortable and it's really, really good quality. So I'm going to have to repost to that. We have a uh, um, ottoman here and then my makeshift bookcase. That's basically a bunch of books stacked one way with a shelf on top, right? That needs to be done as well. Here's the other side of that counter, which is where we fold the laundry. But the project I'm going to do today is this corner right here. First of all, it's hideous. I can't stand it. And the second thing is that this was seriously just temporary. Oh, how'd you like the chair without the air bottom? That's also one of those projects that I'm going to do one day. Um, anyway, so this was just temporary. When I moved most of those were actually all of the book of the year um, from the Encyclopedia Britannica from the living room to the basement, I kind of stacked them here in this corner on this table. Now the table broke last week. One of the leg is like slanted this way. So if I move this thing a little bit too much, the whole thing is going to collapse. It is time for me to attend to this corner. So this is what I'm doing today. I'm going to entirely reorganize this corner. Mind you, I have literally been working in this basement. If you've been watching my channel, um, for a while. I think I've been working on this basement for over a year now. It's an ongoing project. It took a very long time to do it. And one of those days I'll have to show you some of the footage that I took at the time of what this basement looked like before. They literally were just a little path from the stairs to here to go to the laundry, right? And there was this door that was propped open so you could get into this area. But everything in here was packed to the ceiling. It was covered in stuff. It was horrible. So 
it took me a long time to get to where I'm at. One of the things that I wanted to do here was to have bookcases that were integrated into the wall. Hence the reason why I just put the books the way they are right now, because I knew I needed to build some serious bookcase. But in order for me to do that, there was another step that needed to be done first, which was to redo the floor. The floor, as you see it, is just basically concrete with those plastic strips of fake wood, vinyl, whatever. So the floor on this basement is not insulated. The only thing that would insulate this basement is to do the proper type of flooring. So the idea was to either do radiant heat or maybe to have some of those um, uh, foam, um, I don't know what they're called. They look like sheet rock really, but they are insulating foam panels and then you put plywood over it and you can put pergo whatever. And that was the idea. I wanted to put a dark pergo floor on this uh, on this basement but the floor needed to be done first and then the integrated bookshelves but I still don't have the funds to do the floor and those bookcases need to be taken care of I need to have the books put in order and this basement to stop looking the way it looks I mean this is just heinous I can't stand it I'm telling you um, we watch TV in here the kids are here all the time it's not that cold but it's still you know I mean it's great in the summer because it's basically air conditioned for free um, but in the winter it is a little cold but there's heat and in, in it though but the floor is cold so what I did is that I went to uh, Target and I bought this bookcase right here this is about as cheap as you can get this is 30 bucks actually it was under 30 bucks this is from Room Essential um, the reason why I picked this one, not that there was that many choices, we're not talking about Ikea here, is that the two that are here are very tall um, bookcases for or shelves for large books and then the three that are on top are smaller. So this will fit my need. That particular bookcase is going to go right here. That's what I'm doing today. I'm emptying this corner, reorganizing the stuff and building a bookcase that's going to go over here. Now I can't put anything in front of this because this is the panel access for the water shut off and then there's more accesses here. So what I'm probably going to do, I have one of those glass cabinets or bathroom cabinets, I'll show you later on. I'm probably going to put it here if that makes sense and use it as a display case but I'd need to leave this open so eventually I may put a bar right here and have some quilts hanging in front of it but uh, it's neither here nor there so that's what I'm doing today um, then I'm probably but not today another day I'm probably gonna build another or I'm probably gonna buy another one to put here it would be great if I could put two side by side but I doubt it and then the same thing is going to happen here and then the one that's over here um, the black one that used to be in the living room needs to be um, emptied out and I need to have another white one put here. Eventually, will I do the integrated ones once I have the floor? Maybe, I'm not sure. Um, that may work out for me to just have those because it's these are books that are basically storage. We are not reaching out for them all the time. Um, it's mostly finance books, art books, things like this. There's not a lot of novels, if you know what I mean. And um, so the bookcases themselves don't have to be super, super sturdy. Okay? All right, so um, let me get started. I think I'm going to start by building the bookcase that's behind me on the floor. That way I can have it put to the side. And then I'll empty this, put the bookcase in there, and then start filling it back in. Okay? Well, it's done. All right, so I have a shelf. It took about 45 minutes. Uh, this is not the same quality than Ikea. These are separated right here. You see that? So there's a top part and a bottom part. Um, I guess it's because they have the smaller shelves that they're selling are probably up to here. And then when you add the top, you get the tallest one. You see what I'm talking about? Ikea, I think, has a better quality construction. These are, um, you see, like this, this one right here that's not finished. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's pretty sturdy, I think. Now, the one thing is that you have to put the little nails, I don't know if you can see that, all the way in the back here. Use all your nails. Um, at some point, you're going to feel like you have too many of them. I'm telling you, use all of the nails because that panel in the back tends to buckle out and with all the nails around it this is actually giving you an extra level of sturdiness I don't know if I'm making sense but I'm telling you from experience use all the nails all right I'm going to empty this corner right here 
place the bookcase in there and start decorating. All right, so that's pretty easy. All I gotta do, I'm gonna take all of this stuff and I'm gonna basically move it to the sofa. That way I can push that new bookcase and start filling it up again. So here we go. I had to shim it a little bit. I had to use two on each side actually. Um, but this is what it looks like. And again, right here, I'm going to see if I can put in um, that cabinet that I have. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. And over here, I'm going to put a towel bar. Um, that's a bathroom towel bar. It's in white. I'm just going to hang it from here to here so that way I can display one of the antique quilts that I have. And that way it's going to hide the little door over here. And we can have easy access without removing anything except, of course, the quilt. And um, yeah, so let me put the books back in. The top part, I want to kind of keep it light with maybe some decorative items, things like this, and a few books. But definitely using the uh, bottom part here for the book of the year. So we'll see whether or not um, I have enough space. If I don't, I might have to put some horizontal, and that's all right. But those book of the year um, books here, the collection is going to go in the bottom two. And in the top three here, I'm going to keep light. Otherwise, when you walk in, it's just going to be too much and it's going to make the room look smaller. I don't know if I'm making sense on that one. But let me put those books in and then I'll show you what it looks like with so just those books. There's a lot of them and I also have to reassort them by year. And I think it starts in 1966 or 67 all the way up to 2011. All right, that's done. Um, I managed to fit them all on those two shelves. Now, when you have heavy book like this, I'm telling you right now, those shelves will not be able to sustain the weights. They will buckle kind of like this way. So what I did is that the ones that I have here, I put them this way. And then since I didn't have room to put another one, I put a book that I don't care about. And I know we'll never ever reread as a support. So it's really tight tucked in and that's providing support to this shelf right here so over time this is not going to buckle because it's pretty pretty sturdy right now um it kind of looks funky with the two over here and then this shelf because that's the one that's the support for the whole unit i cannot bring down that's a problem i wish i could but uh, i can't so now um i'm thinking about it maybe what i can do is move this one down and see if i can put those um horizontal in instead. Maybe I'll do that and see what it looks like instead. Okay, well this is what I did instead. All right, so I moved the shelf and I have six like this with the book right in the middle, if you can see that, to support the shelf. That way that leaves me an entire row here that's clean, but again I can't move the shelf down. So I'm gonna see if I have a leftover white shelf somewhere um, that I can put on top over here. I would have a shelf that's kind of narrow because this empty space here is going to get all dirty and dusty and whatnot. But I um, managed to get all those books in. It doesn't look too bad when you walk in. And now I'm going to be able to just kind of like decorate and put a few other books in there. Most of the stuff that's here doesn't belong in that bookcase. I have to put it in the boiler room for now because it needs to be sorted out. It's things that I pulled out of the boiler room when I was reorganizing it. And kind of didn't really have a room at the time. Um... Same thing with the basket that's over there, but for now, I'm just going to kind of like put things back into this one for display and whatnot. And then I'll install that bar for the um, quilt and see if I can fit the cabinet on top. So what I'm doing here is trying to um, go through my precarious bookcase over there and find books that are part of the same author or same collection. Like for instance, here I have all the books 
by Malcolm Gladwell, you know, Blink and the Tipping Point and all of that. These were fantastic books to read. I have my, just in case you're wondering, what is this? This is a 1904, 1905 postcard uh, of an actor reenacting Napoleon um, in St. Helena. It's waxed, so it broke eventually in shipping when I bought it on um, eBay. But I have it framed because it's absolutely beautiful and I'm a big fan of Napoleon being French and all. So that goes in this corner. I'm going to fill up some things here and move down to the second shelf. So I kind of had to disassemble this entire thing here. And you can tell I'm hoping that there's less books in here because it's not touching the ceiling anymore. Um, but this is what I've done with this bookshelf. So my husband and I are a little bit of maniacs when it comes to organizing books. They gotta be by categories because um, otherwise we can't find our books and we got so many. I have, so again, and I have one of them that was missing so I brought it in here. These are all the uh, Malcolm Gladwell books. Um, put a uh, vintage mill glass thing here and Napoleon is in the back and this pile right here are kind of like sociology uh, type books but they mostly studies about American culture so of course we have Fast Food Nation and if I have anything to recommend to you I would recommend any of the Paco Underhill books so that would be Why We Buy and The Call of the Mall. These are very very interesting books about how we are manipulated um, by the way they build the malls and display things in the mall to push us to purchase things. It's, these are fascinating books. Really, really like them. I should have them both next to each other, so I'm probably going to do that later on. These are all personal power and personal finances books. That's all there is. So it's budgeting, Sue Zorman, um, things like this, Tony Robbins, of course, all of the Rich Dad, Poor Dad series are there, and these are the Wall Street Journal um, series about your taxes, personal finance, things of that nature. I have two vintage boxes. I don't know if I ever talked to you about these. But this is a really, really old, it's called the Friendship Treasure Chest. So I guess that was kind of like a time capsule. They were selling for kids way back then. I have no idea how old it is. But I bought it for five bucks and I think it looks really, really cool. I love the design of it. Of course, I don't have the key. And then an old, very old tea tin um, from England. So that's going to go over here. And let me pull back a little bit. And yep, that's what it looks like. So this was not a tough project, but I have to say it looks much better. Um, I have to see if I can fix this table, dust it a little bit move all this stuff so let me rearrange everything a little bit here and then we'll um and then i'll go and see if i can install the towel rack i have to pull out the cabinet and see if i can fit it in there i think it might be just too much so i may have to put it on that wall but then it will be all by itself so maybe i'll just skip on that idea all together i'm hoping you can see what i'm doing here i'm installing my um towel rack i'm using these uh, self-screwing type of anchors. These are super easy to install. In sheet rock, I just marked where I need to have them and you basically just screw them in directly into the sheet rock. Hopefully I don't have a... Um, I, did, I should have checked. <laughs> so you just go like this in there. Like I said, hopefully... Yeah, okay, I'm good. I was afraid I would have a... Um, whatever you call it, a stud. And you just screw them in like that. That's it. And this is an old towel rack that I had in my uh, bathroom upstairs. And just push a little bit at the beginning. And these are perfect if you don't have a drill and they don't have to be the butterfly type. There we go. There we go. So this is the uh, piece that holds the towel rack together.
Almost done. This is an old quilt. You see how damaged it is? So what I'm going to do is try to hide the damage behind. It needs to be repaired. It's another one of my projects. Okay, well here we go. I spread it a little bit better. It's not touching the floor. Uh, it's not the best folding job. You can tell that this the back of it here that's showing and the back is a little bit different it's this fabric right here that has little uh, cavalry guys I have no idea how old this is for those of you who are quilters you probably know all I know is that my mother-in-law purchased it at the quilt show from her mother-in-law way back in the day so I don't know maybe it's 30 um, 40 years old something like that might be more it's handmade that I know there's absolutely zero machine stitch on it let me show you see that it's all hand stitched but it does have some damage because it was left in the garage for a while and cats kind of uh, you know did what cats do but it fills the purpose of hiding that panel in the back so now let me see if my little cabinet fits on top because that would be really really cute I don't know if it does if it doesn't then I won't show you um, that part I still have to clean up all of this um, and then once that's done I'll show you a final look but so far I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. A little bit over two hours I managed to salvage the table however it is not that solid there is you can tell so eventually it's gonna have to be replaced probably with a smaller one I think this one is too big and again remember the sofa is going to get reupholstered at some point well I'll make a, a slip cover for it and uh, the same thing with this big ottoman so the two of them match um, this is what it looks like on this side You've seen that already and here is my new corner and that is done and I'm loving it so my little cabinet did not fit it was too long and in the old days we had those prints that are framed these are advertisements from very very old good housekeeping I think or was it uh, Women's Day I'm not sure so anyway they're very old these are from the 50s I have about five of them um, this one is the only one I had that was uh, horizontal. Um, I kind of like it better. I tried the other one, one of the uh, vertical one. I didn't like the way it looks. So this is um, a print that I placed on top of my little quilt. My basket with the blankets is over there. You can tell there is kind of like pattern overload right now, but that's all right. Um, and I'm really, really liking this. So if you look at it from the other angle, if you remember what it looked like, this is a little bit of a transformation. It didn't take too long, like I said, a little bit over two hours. And this is the kind of project that makes me happy. It keeps me going, keeps me motivated to do something in the house. And once you do that repetitively every week or every two weeks, believe it or not, in no time you'll have an organized home. So when you come in from the laundry room, and this is what it looks like. Um, I'm liking this much better. It's more homey. It definitely looks more organized. And I did add uh, one of the things I did not put in the other room, in the cold room, are my mom's old, old negatives from the uh, 30s and stuff because these, I, I don't want them to get any kind of mildew or, you know, so it's heated in this room. I'm going to keep them on the shelf. I did add an old Jack Daniels uh, tin box that I had purchased with actually with those two 
So it kind of fills up, and here's the cat. Hi, Vespa. Yeah, oh, she's happy. Don't you go destroy this, all right? She's not the one who destroyed the um, uh, the quilt originally. It was one of Grandma's cats, but anyway, so final look. This is what it looks like, and I am loving it. I love this quilt. Anyway, like I said, this was, you can see, this is a big mess. <laughs> well, no, not really. I just have to clean a little bit here and, you know, get my coffee out of the way. Um, but as you can see, this is uh, a small project. If you have a corner in your house right now that is uh, kind of like an, you know, eyesore, just spend the time, empty the whole corner, um, get a bookcase, put the stuff back in, reorganize it a little bit, spruce it up, decorate, whatever. It just makes a huge difference. And really, this was not a long project to... Uh, to take on. It really wasn't. I mean, I'm not even tired or anything. I'm going to do another one upstairs in the kitchen. Actually, I have two projects I want to do today in the kitchen. One of them has to do with the um, uh, cabinet above the fridge where I have a gazillion things I really need to sort through, including the medication. So that's one video coming up. And then there's like the little corner. Um, that's the hot spot in the kitchen where we continuously put junk in there and then the junk starts going into the junk drawer and now the whole thing is just, you know, a mess. So I want to do that. And basically I'm getting, I'm keeping busy and occupied as I'm desperately waiting for my husband to go back to work and stop with his freelance so that I have access to the office. So like I said, early in this video, next week I'm doing the bookcases in the office. So that's going to be another probably uh, three or four videos. And yeah, that's about it. So uh, thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like my little project. Comment down below. Um, subscribe if you are new. And I guess I'll talk to you later. Bye.